Good morning, guys, or good afternoon in your case. Good afternoon. Hi, how are you? Good afternoon. Hi. Um, yeah, you know, one thing that I was checking here uh, before before we, we, we joined for our meeting today, I think I had messed up with the, the Moodle uh, material there. I don't know if... If you if you had the papers that you you were supposed to read for today, yeah, it's for the, the date. It was on thirteenth. Yeah. Okay. All right. But were you able? To be, I, I'm sorry about that. I, I don't know. You know, Moodle Moodle has this thing that you I can hide things or show things, uh, and for whatever reason there was something that was hidden and should be showing and, and vice versa. So I, I'll are have to. For, hmm? Are they are they, are those people supposed to be for Vincatrama? Yeah, we, 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 the, 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 the reading that you were supposed to do for today was Venkatraman uh, 1994, IT Enabled Business Transformation, mm -hmm. and Venkatraman and Henderson, Real Strategies for Virtual or, uh, Organizing. It's not hidden here, it's visible. Pardon? It's visible, it's not hidden. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not hidden, but it's the wrong dates, right? It's, it's, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I will, after we finish today, I will have a look again and see what, you know, in which ways I messed up with things here. Uh, but hopefully you, 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 you had the opportunity to, 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 to get access to the, to the right papers, right? Um, uh, anyway, uh, well, uh, yeah, good to, to, to have you here again. Uh, the, as I said, I, I understand that this program, that, that this course is, is different to what you're used to. And I hope that uh, if I can't convince you straight away, I hope that after these two weeks of, uh, of talk, uh, you will have the feeling, well, this gave me a different perspective, a different way to to think uh, IT in the in, in the organizations, right? I, I tend to, to say that uh, we see the world through the glasses that someone puts in front of our eyes, right? And I just want to give you the opportunity of, uh, you know, e experimenting with different glasses than the ones we as engineers uh, are used to see the, the world. Uh, and of course, if you're able to experiment the glasses, the, the spectacles the, uh, uh, that, that are used by business people, that means that you will probably be able to communicate better with them. Uh, and, and this is what we want, we intend with this uh, course here. We want to improve your jargon in, in you know, the, the language that you have in order to speak to business people. Uh, as I think it was Basim who, who the other day said that he had a boss that said, could you speak English? Of course. Uh, it's all, regardless of it's English, Arabic, uh, I don't know, any, any of the, the different languages that you speak in India, or, I'm sorry, uh, again, Auchi, I don't know, what is your, your native language, uh, Auchi? What is it? My native language is Igbo. Igbo, Igbo. Igbo. Uh -huh. uh, and, and what is your native language, uh, Pradeep? Tamar. Tamar. Wow, that, that that's one one of the languages that I had not heard about. <laughs> in India, in India, I know that you you sometimes when I go to to Izizalek and I've had some some groups that were very well much larger, let's say fifteen students, and sometimes I had five or six Indian students in the class, and they yeah, spoke English to each other because they were from different parts of the country. Exactly, uh, there are twenty eight languages out there in India. Yeah. So uh, uh, what I say is, uh, when, when we say, w w probably when Vasim's uh, uh, boss was saying, "Could you speak English?" He was saying, "Well, could you could you could you speak a language that I understand? Could you could you talk in terms that make sense to me?" And and of course, we are trained as en engineers or as as people in the in, in this more um, how do I say more technical areas of uh, computing and everything. We are trained to to extract the most from the from from the technology. But we're, we're so focused on, again, on the means, on, on extracting the most, but we, we, we're not led to think of, we, we want to extract the most to do what, right? And that's what interests the business people. They want, they want to know about the business, which is probably already a little more focused towards that, as he's a startup man, uh, because he has to produce some, some value to people that will only pay for whatever his, his company uh, produces if they see value there. So he has to express, it, it's more important that he makes uh, uh, the customers understand the value of the technology than the technology itself. Right? Most of us uh, drive cars and that, that, that doesn't mean that we are necessarily well acquainted with all the mechanics uh, of the cars, except for our mechanical engineer. Pradeep is the mechanical engineer, right? Uh, 
All right. Pradeep may understand everything that happens inside the engine of the, 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 the car. Most of us, you know, we, if the car stops, we have to call insurance or someone because we don't know what, what to do about it. And we don't care. We, we just hope that the car, the value of the car is it, it has to be reliable so that it doesn't stop on us, right? We don't want to be in the, the middle of uh, a road uh, and, and, and having a, the, the car stop and, and, and not knowing what to do. So what Pradeep as a mechanical engineer has to do is to, to, to make sure that his reliable engine is a perfect black box. We don't want to know what is inside, but we, we understand that the value is it takes me from here to there, wherever there is. Of course, uh, uh, Pradeep as a mechanical engineer probably thinks of a car as a black box that takes, from, takes us from point A to point B. Uh, thank God, uh, Mercedes-Benz, um, I don't know, BMW, and all these uh, companies have other people that are not mechanical engineers only. Because, you know, for them, a car is not something that takes you from point A to point B. But a car is, maybe for the marketing guys at uh, BMW or Mercedes, a car is an expression of your lifestyle or of your, well, those companies of your previous success. You can only afford one of those cars if, you, if, you, if, if, you've, if you've been successful beforehand. So notice again, when I told you the other day about, uh, we, we, we can think of a pair of jeans of something that costs $15 to, 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 to produce or something that the customer values at $100. Uh, the engineer usually lives in the world of costs, which is important because we have to, our, the products, our dreams have to be feasible and, 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 and making them feasible means that they, the costs have to be lower than the price. Right? So this is the, the, let's say the first challenge, the first magic that, that, that any company has to do is it has to keep its costs low enough so that the price for which it intends to sell the products uh, is higher than the cost. Uh, this may seem obvious, uh, but it, not it, it doesn't necessarily happen in a competitive market. You may have a process that is not very efficient and therefore produces uh, a product for a price that is higher than what the customer is expecting to pay for the price, simply because the customer has already seen a price tag on the competitor's products and it's much lower. And that has already made, anchored the customer's, um, uh, let's say, price perception or value perception let's say uh, at a different price than than, than than you would expect so in the what, what i mean is in the past during most of the industrial revolution uh, and when i say most of the industrial revolution i'd say that uh, the, the industrial revolution has been around for 300 years maybe the first 200 years were time of little competition the engineers ruled because they, they, they made up uh, interesting new gadgets for, the, for, 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 let's say, for a population of customers that was increasing. Uh, and and their, their main, main task was to make things cheaper so that people could afford, not only just the kings and the, the, the lords, the, the rich people, the, the rich uh, aristocracy, uh, but also other people could afford. So that was the times of the engineers making... Uh, things uh, cost less so that people could afford. But after that, and, and I would say that this happened mainly in the 19th century, we started having competition among different manufacturers of the same products. And then it was the challenge was no longer just producing for, for the least uh, uh, cost, but producing what the customers uh, wanted, changing and, and what the customers wanted in terms of providing customers with what they valued, not what they could afford only. Right, uh, and and and, th and that's that's where um, I I'd say that th that's where we engineers started uh, uh, losing part of of our glory times. Right, we were not the only uh, again. Uh, uh, we, we were not the only ones that were able to cre create value. In fact, we were too we were too uh, stuck with the idea of reducing costs and and, and being efficient. Uh, and we were missing the opportunity of being effective. Um, I want to play with these two words during our course here, 
efficiency and effectiveness uh, in a way that may be new to you. I don't know, do, do you consider those two words as synonyms or, or do you see difference between efficiency and effectiveness? It can be effective but not efficient. Uh, could you uh, elaborate on that, uh, Uchi? Maybe what, what's the difference between if being uh, effective and not efficient or efficient and not effective? Okay, in every business there's a goal mm -hmm. and for you to um, attain your goals, you have to be you value efficiency over effectiveness because you might be effective in your job, but it takes not just one person to be efficient, you have to be efficient as a team, right? So people can be effective within um, isolated yeah, isolated class, but what you're doing together might not be efficient. Efficient. Uh, I, I have the impression, uh, Uchi, that you, you, you have the, 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 the right understanding, but uh, your, maybe the vocabulary is, is shifting. Uh, what you're calling effective is what we in business usually call efficient, and what you, you've been calling if efficient is what we usually call effective. And, and let me explain. Uh, in fact, if you look at the dictionary, right, and maybe if you have an old dictionary, I mean old uh, dictionary that, that is probably more than 30 years old, Efficiency and effectiveness will be synonyms there. Right? Many times that happens. We, we do have words that express uh, similar ideas, or at least ideas that people cannot uh, distinguish uh, among. Uh, what happened about uh, yeah, a few decades ago is that we had this guy, um, Peter Drucker, uh, or, or as the Americans call Peter Drucker. He, he was from Austria, I believe. So, so he, if, if we pronounce his name the German way, it would be Peter Drucker, right? Uh, but he lived in the U.S. for most of his life, and he was, let's say, one of the main um, uh, main authors in in business. Um, uh, uh, well, he was not. He, he was also a researcher, but he was more like a so, someone who was uh, uh, he, he was a, a professor and everything. But he was more into disseminating the good ideas of the the of the, the nineteen hundreds of the twentieth century in business. Uh, and this guy noticed that uh, we did have those two words. In English and, and, and in many of our languages, right? Uh, or at least we had more than than than, than, than a word to express this idea of uh, trying to try trying to come up with better things. Or, or uh, and then he coined this difference. He said, "Efficient to be efficient is to do something right." So engineers are efficient. They they. You, you, you provide them with, a, uh, with a, a, a question and they solve it the best possible way in terms of the process. They, efficiency has a lot to do with the process. The, this is the way Peter Drucker uh, uh, framed it, right? Uh, which in, and this is why I'm, I'm saying that it's probably, it seems that you, 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 you see the distinction of, of, of two concepts, but you are expressing them the opposite of what Peter Drucker did. And of course, he, he was a guy who influenced... Uh, 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 academia and also uh, business uh, a lot because I mean he wrote about a hundred books uh, he was a very very influential in that sense so he said to be efficient is to do something right to be effective is to do the right thing right? to do the right thing relates to the goals to the the, the pur purpose to the mission uh, uh, as uh, which he was was referring to uh, to be effective sorry to be efficient relates to finding uh, a, a, a process that, uh, that leads to achieving something uh, in, in the most proper way. Well, you could say, you could argue that uh, efficiency and effectiveness should always follow together, right? It, 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 it makes little sense to be uh, efficient and not effective, and it also makes little sense to be effective and not efficient. Uh, the... In engineers focus on being efficient, and this is why I keep telling you that engineers need someone to tell them what to do, right? Someone tell, tells you, we have this problem, and then the engineer very efficiently solves the problem. Engineering is about efficiency. Engineering is about finding the best process. Uh, engineering is not necessarily about effectiveness, because effectiveness relates to asking the right question or to proposing the right challenges, the right problems to be solved. Uh, we, the, the, the 20th century brought many other professionals into organizations that uh, could help in that sense also. Many, for example, marketers. 
marketers are very good at uh, developing effectiveness. Marketers help to point towards the direction that the customers, well, mar marketers help us uh, help organizations understand what the customers want and help engineers build what the customers want. So marketers would be uh, uh, professionals that are very focused on effectiveness, the way Peter Drucker proposed the term, right? Uh, uh, and engineers uh, would be more related to to to, to the process. It, I, I think it's very important that, that we have this difference between these two, two, these two concepts uh, because uh, vocabulary vocabulary helps us think broader. Uh, if we if we think of them as synonyms, we will always say, of course, we want to we, we want and we need as companies to be more efficient, effective, effective or whatever. Right? Uh, we have to do to do good and to do uh, good things. Uh, but if we don't understand that there is a difference between, I mean, we, we, be, we may be very good, very precise, have very good engineers, and we're building a product that the world doesn't care about, which means that it's going to be a failure. We're going to be very efficient in doing something that the market doesn't want. Okay? Uh, and, 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 and again, uh, so the importance of uh, us creating and, and creating new vocabulary is that with, with more vocabulary, we expand the way we think. Uh, this may even seem a little academic, but I argue, and, and of course, and I'm not even a, 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 a how, how they say, I, I'm not a, 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 someone who studies language or who, who studies uh, uh, studies what, what is, is, is that important thing that Vasin's uh, uh, boss wanted. Could you speak English to me? Uh, people that have a better vocabulary have are able to have better ideas and are able to express their ideas better. So notice, to express their ideas better means to be efficient, to have better ideas is to be effective. Uh, so uh, we, we, we do need to, 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 to work with, whenever we have a chance, whenever we figure out that there is a big difference between A and B, we should find ways of precisely explain what A is and what B is, because that helps us further uh, think about that and also helps others who understand that difference to also elaborate on that. Um, so. When I say that my purpose here is to build vocabulary or uh, so that you can uh, have ideas that relate better to the ideas that business people would have, and also that you have ideas that you can um, uh, that can be ex better explored from a, a business perspective. So I want to, to, to some extent, I want in, in these two weeks to um, deconstruct you as engineers a bit. Not much, because we, we still need, uh, of course, we still need the efficiency of the engineer, right? But rebuild, re reframe your neurons in a way that you also think effectively, effectiveness, uh, eff sorry, effectively. Uh, and so you're not only concerned with the, of doing things right, but also doing the right thing. Okay, well, having said that, I just, uh, let me switch to, to that mode where I, I can show you my screen here. Uh, so again, sorry for the messed up uh, date here. Uh, again, I'll have to check what I did. I'm surely missing some some papers uh, there for one of the day. I, I'll, I'll have to check that that later today, uh, just to make sure that you're always reading what we are expected to read for for each uh, class. Uh, and then, uh, so we'll be working with again with the ideas of, of encatrement. This is the, one of the guys that we already discussed uh, in our previous uh, class when we were talking about. Uh, well, this paper here, uh, Henderson and Katerman leveraging IT for business transformation. Remember, this was that paper uh, uh, that we discussed on, on Monday in which the authors claimed that there are different ways in which IT can be involved with, uh, with, um, with strategy, with, uh, with the strategizing process, right? IT can be just the, some, some, some additional um, tool or function to to execute strategy, which means that uh, IT doesn't even need to have a, a, a leadership that is uh, at the ego level, let's say, that, uh, a leadership that, that uh, performs, that discusses strategy, because it only has to understand the strategy uh, and, and help execute it. Uh, but these authors also said that IT could be used uh, as uh, either to transform the process, which would mean to become more efficient, or to transform the product, which means to become more effective, right? That, that, those were the ideas that we, we discussed uh, on, on Monday. One thing that I, I didn't um, 
mention, but I, I'd like to, b b before we, we, we get into the papers of today, maybe I, I, we just need to have a look again at the those roles that are that are assumed by, I'm just trying to bring to the screen here this paper, because remember, uh, uh, for, for each one of those different, um, 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 different perspectives of, of alignment of IT and the, and the business, uh, the authors proposed different roles to be taken by the IT people. So let, let me just very quickly uh, review this with you. I told you that sometimes we at, uh, uh, in, in IT are expected to be super supermen, super supermen and super women. But look here, for example, for, for strategy execution, the role, uh, and again, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I wasn't able to figure out yet how to show my, my mouse, but I'm, I'm here, I'm looking at the picture here, and I'm saying, uh, looking at the role of the IS management. Look here, th this guy is a strategy implementer. Strategy implementer can be, any engineer is a good strategy implementer because the boss tells you, I have this problem and you say, don't worry, I will find the most efficient solution. Uh, that's, that's what usually is expected from the engineer to be a strategy implementer. But then uh, notice that uh, sometimes we get to a situation where in figure three, in this uh, technology transformation alignment perspective, the role of IT management here is is to become a technology architect. Notice it's it's already a different role, right? It's is is the, the same person able to be uh, a technology implementer or a technology architect? I don't know. Uh, uh, some, sometimes the the if, if there is a change in strategy and, and and strategy now requires technology transformation instead of simply a support to, to the business. Maybe we need, we definitely here need someone who has that uh, more strategic perspective. The CIO, we, we need a CIO here. Of course, can I, a CIO also be just a, a, a strategy implementer? I believe so. If the CIO has some strong technical background, yes, but, uh, but not necessarily. For example, in this case here for, for figure three, the CIO may be, some, may be someone who's, who's not even an engineer. Maybe this person here could be someone who, who's able to talk to engineers in yes. their language, right? Doing the opposite of what uh, Vasim's uh, boss used to do. Instead of saying, could you speak my language? Uh, may, uh, maybe uh, the CIO could be someone who spoke both languages and, and he'd be the, 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 the translator. Who's basically the messenger, I would say. Exactly. The man in the middle. Yeah, exactly. That could be the case. So, But what I want you to, to, to see is that if it is to be the same person, because sometimes we have the same, co the, the, the same company, in different times, or, or or sometimes even at the same time, but in different departments or, or, or with, with, with respect to different projects, uh, it may be doing technology transformation for, for part of the business, and it may be doing just support of the execution for, for another part of the business. So this guy may have to have these different roles here, right? And look here, the third possible role uh, that happens here, in figure four, we already have the, 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 IT, the, I, the IT or IS manager as being the catalyst of a business change. Gee, this guy, this definitely doesn't have to necessarily be someone who's very technical uh, in, in, or uh, this guy doesn't need to be an implementer of technology. Uh, he, he must uh, be someone who, who tells about the possibilities of technology, uh, 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 allowing for, 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 for a completely different business. This guy here is someone, uh, this catalyst here is definitely someone who should be much better at, at least at this stage here, at uh, effectiveness than efficiency, right? He has to bring good ideas of ways in which technology changes the, the, the business, okay? Uh, so notice the role is changing either over time or from one project to the other. Will we be able to, and, and, and look here for, for figure five, now the role of IT management is to become the executive leadership uh, of a, a change. So different roles, required either from the same person and, and, and that person, this is why the CIO usually needs to be a superman, uh, he or she needs to be very good technically because many times it's, it's executive leadership. Of course, you, you can't be an executive leader uh, to deploy some technology if you have no idea of what that, uh, that, of what that technology is about. Other times you're just implementing uh, technology and again, you need to be very technically involved 
But in other cases, you're the guy who's just talking to the to the uh, high um, leadership of the company and and showing them put the potential of technology. Uh, so you're you're almost like a businessman selling the, the opportunities of, of of technology more than uh, exactly the, the 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 person who knows the details about it. So in some cases here. We need that this IT person who's in charge of the IT department or uh, in some cases we need the eagle's view. In other cases, the monkey's view is more than enough. Uh, so uh, if, if this all happens at the same time, the, the, I mean, if the company has uh, and, and maybe large companies, large, large organizations uh, where, of course, it, it has a major strategy, a ma major direction that the company wants to go, but it has different projects you may find that different projects in different projects the IT person the, the IT leadership uh, is involved in a more um, technical way or in a more business uh, like way okay um, so uh, you have to be you have to, to be prepared for that if you want to be efficient and effective okay? going back here uh, in this case here what do, 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 do what is more important if, from, from the IT uh, leader here efficiency or effectiveness? Effectiveness. This guy needs some, some, uh, um, let's say, some uh, ego's view. But also notice that uh, uh, he will be dealing with changing the, the uh, changing the processes. So, so in this case, I'd say efficiency and effectiveness, effectiveness, effectiveness from the same person are very important. Uh, in this, uh, let's say, this one here, this one only effectiveness. This guy will not notice. He will not deal with uh, with um, with the the details. He will not deal with. The, he will not get his hands dirty, right? In the sense that uh, it, he's only working at a more uh, uh, conceptual level, right? In the, the previous one, okay. Here, notice again uh, 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 effectiveness and efficiency because he he needs to. To, to talk with the, the business guys here, we're talking about effectiveness, the directions we want to go, the, 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 the things that we have to do. And when talking to the, 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 the uh, let's say, people at a more operational level, it is how we're going to do it. Right? The how, uh, when we're talking about how we're doing something, we're talking about efficiency, uh, the process. When we're talking about what to do, we're talking about effectiveness and, uh, and, and the goals. And, uh, and the first one here, in this case, uh, just efficiency. Okay? So this was uh, just to summarize what we, we, we discussed in the, the previous class. And, and uh, so Alex, for, for the last graph... You mean figure... figure yeah, figure... Uh, sorry, the last five one. or whatever. Three... Four, five, yeah. Four, five. Here. Yeah. In this case here... Uh, the difference between the, the again, notice, uh, we, we, it's a model, right? All models are there just to shape, to, it's, it's glasses that we put in front of our eyes to understand the world. I've already told you, the only reason why these guys got to four perspectives was because they started with that, with that mode, with, with this model here. Where is it? Just a second. They started with this model where they could fit, it's a, it's a big box where they can fit four triangles there, right? If they turn, if they, they turn the, the, the triangles around, they can fit four triangles inside the shape. If, if they had started with a different uh, uh, model, they would probably have come up with, with, with three or five uh, different uh, perspectives. But anyway, they came up with those four perspectives. And, and, and let me go back to the one that you're talking about, the last one. This last one, the difference between this last one and the first one that is uh, only execution is that this guy here, this guy's the, the IT strategy people the, the, the CIO here has to implement things has to change the way uh, uh, the operation works but it has to change it from a, a, a let's say a, a business perspective from a, from a from an ego's perspective it's different to the first one where he just had to accommodate what uh, IT what, what the IT department did in order not to disturb the strategy over there it would, yeah then in that case, I believe efficiency and effectiveness both are required, right? In this one, yes, both. Yeah. Right. Fair enough. Yeah. Makes yeah. sense. Okay. Think. Uh, let me go to the the first uh, figure of this uh, paper again. The guys who are here in the top part of the 
regardless of if we're talking about the business strategists or the IT strategists in this uh, figure, the guys at the top, they definitely, if they're, if, if they're on the top, they definitely, definitely have to concern about effectiveness. They want to know the right thing to do. They have to decide what needs to be done. Yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the guys at the lower parts, regardless if we're talking uh, people that are at the right here, the lower part, the, the right where, where, where it's the, the IT people, or the guys at the left. Yeah, they're more associated with processes, which means, which means efficiency. Exactly. They, they, they have to do, do it right. They have to do whatever is planned uh, uh, on the, the upper part of the, the, the diagram there. They have to do it right. Okay. Okay. Uh, so th this is th this was the idea from 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 our previous class, and then uh, we get so this is all to say we we, we are with the same guys. It makes ha having uh, uh, other papers by by the same Ben Katerman and Henderson here. It, 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 it means that first we're we're definitely not going to have a lot of disagreement because authors do not tend to di disagree with themselves, right? But I can tell you that this was the perspective. This was the view of the nineties. These guys were proposing to us what we, we nowadays call digital transformation. Right? Uh, we coined a different term, uh, but, uh, but we are actually trying to do now, 30 years later, what they were proposing to us back then. So uh, we're not going to see uh, a lot of uh, you know, the, the, the ideas that we'll discuss today will not clash or, or go against what, uh, hopefully, what we discussed in our previous class for two reasons. First, because it was the ideas of the 90s, and, 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 and more than, even more than that, because we have even the same authors here, right? But uh, I, I, I wanted you to, to have this perspective of uh, how technology, when brought into organizations with an idea of not only executing what, the, the business, uh, but also transforming the business, uh, what, what, what is required. Um, and then uh, let's uh, start with Venkat Truman, 1994. Uh, I told you that uh, that this guy uh, Venka Truman and Henderson. They are, one, one of the things that I like about their the way they, they write is that there's always in their in their papers there's always at least one diagram or one, one figure many times more than that uh, where they try to summarize their ideas. And I would say that the summary of this paper is uh, shown in this picture. Right. This this is. Let's say after you read the paper, uh, and and hopefully, if you get to this paper again two years from now af after having read it and after we having discussed it in in, in this class, uh, hopefully, uh, you don't even have to read it again. You just look at this picture, even a few years from now, and you will remember the main idea. So I I, I really like this. Uh, I think it's a very efficient way of summarizing a paper when you when you are able to bring us a, a drawing a figure that has the main ideas so we'll probably spend uh, uh, you know this first half of our class today discussing precisely this figure here okay um, uh, well I, I, I and, and, and my idea again I, I don't want to be lecturing you it, always think of this as as a a dialogue right so um, I, I, I usually tend to talk more than you do at your end, but feel free to interrupt me at any time. And, and I also think that even if I talk more than you do, it's still a dialogue if I have your neurons there, you know, shaking one against the other and, and, and say, well, now I understand this thing or, 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 or if not, well, now, now this made me confused. So, so get, into the, get into my monologue at any time and say, look, I did, I did not understand that. But the main, main idea about uh, this... Uh, uh, this figure here is that uh, well the authors wanted to they say that technology brings uh, a lot a lot of potential benefits to organizations uh, but in uh, these benefits do not come on their own they require business transformation uh, so they also bring a lot of risk okay because business transformation means changing what we already do that we know well that we have processes that are well established right into something, we have to jump into the into an unknown future, right? When we transform, business transformation is always risky, because uh, we uh, again we, we, and humans humans do not want to change, or at least we do not want to change things that are working well. 
I have this impression. Uh, sometimes we hear, um, for example, comfort uh, zone. Yeah, yeah. People talk about a lot about comfort zone, and they talk about this comfort zone as being something uh, bad. I don't think it is. You know, uh, I, I, in fact, I think that the comfort zone. Of course, you, you you can you can talk about comfort zone as well. It gets people to be lazy, but there is a comfort zone that is that one where you say, look, if I move to if if I move east. It's not as comfortable. If I move west, it's also not as comfortable. North or south, not as comfortable. I'll stay here. So I, I, I tend to think that many times, uh, mainly managers say, "Oh, my, my, the people that work uh, with me are, are lazy, and I want to, I need to get them out of their comfort zone." But if we think, uh, what, what is our exp, exp, uh, aspirations in life? What do we, what do we want to reach? Isn't it a comfort zone? I mean, don't you say, well, I work because I want to get to a stage where maybe I don't need to work, uh, or I... Exactly. I mean, sorry for interrupting here, like, the, the, the term itself, comfort zone, it's, it's really controversial. Like, sometimes it could be, as you just said, it is a healthy thing. But again, on the other hand, we cannot deny the fact that if you don't risk, you won't win. Sometimes these risks could be crazy mm -hmm. and they would be absolutely your end of business or mm -hmm. your destruction. And sometimes it is a potential step to take you to the top, mm -hmm. which I believe I would answer your, your question by saying why we need to mm -hmm. work and why would we need to do that. Or even it could be something, a turning point of your survival. If you don't take this risk, you're out of business. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the surrounding or the competitors are doing X, Y, Z. So it's a little bit controversial. I think it all depends on the criteria that is surrounding you and the situation, in my opinion. Yeah. But hey. Yes, I get it understand your point. Yeah. yeah. What, what I'm saying is that usually if people are, are, are on their comfort zone and they see, well, this is the, 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 the best I will get from this situation or whatever, uh, and you as the manager... Um, see that maybe that shouldn't be the, uh, a comfort zone. I would say that the manager is in the comfort zone because the, because the manager is not being able to tell its people, to show its people that what they believe to be a comfort zone is a very risky uh, position. Uh, uh, so, so I, I, <coughs> yeah, go on, Ochi. No, I was agreeing with you. I said that I agree. Yeah, many many times, uh, I tend to think that when, when and, and managers use that a lot, they're always complaining about their people and saying, oh, they can't get out of their comfort zone. And, I, and my question would be, why should they? If it's a comfortable zone, why should they? Right? So we as, as the CIOs or, or whoever, if we want to uh, a change to happen, we should believe that uh, there is a, 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 another, a, another area that is more comfortable than this one. Right? And of course, in many cases, in, in, in many cases uh, what you're calling the comfort zone, uh, or at least the, the comfort zone that you're trying to reach is not the comfort zone for your employees. It's only the comfort zone for your stakeholders or for yourself, right? I will be more comfortable, but my my people are not. So then I would, I would say, well, who uh, you, you should think that if, if your if your people are reluctant to change a comfort the comfort zone that they they're in right now for a jump into the dark, if you think that that's what they should be doing. I would say, gee, you have very, uh, you're, you're very poorly served of, of, of people, right? They, they don't have any brains. So they will only be excited about a change into the dark, uh, into a situation where they don't know if, if it's going to be more comfortable or less comfortable, if they're stupid. So many times when, when people react to change, it, it is the managers who were in their comfort zone and were not able to, to show people that change is needed, or, in fact, because they, they did all their calculations, they, 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 they did all their thinking and thought, well, you know, where these guys want to go? I don't want to go there because it's going to be poor for me. In the past, again, I, 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 I try to I oversimplify, oversimplify situations where, when I say, well, if we were in the Industrial Revolution, it was the boss thinking and everyone else, you know, just... Uh, um, being affected by by the strategy, uh, everyone else working just as pieces on a, a, a chess table uh, and uh, not being able to do much about. In the knowledge um, uh, society that we are 
building and that we are getting into, uh, people have to be convinced that uh, what they thought to be a comfortable zone in the past is not a comfortable zone any, any longer, right? So we, we will have to discuss this and, and we'll spend a whole class just talking about, okay, we, we, we understand that change is necessary, uh, that, that a transformation will be, that this business tr transformation as, as, as proposed here is required, but we'll have to make sure that the people that are with us also understand that. Uh, otherwise, we are in a comfortable uh, zone claiming that they are the, the lazy ones. We are, the, we are in that comfortable zone of being lazy uh, as it's usually, uh, uh, you know, the way that, that this term is, is used, right? Usually they say people are in the comfort zone, they're meaning they're lazy. When in fact, no, they, 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 may, they may be reacting simply because they're not lazy. They have done their homework. They notice that the change that you're proposing is bad for them. And they, they want to keep things the way they are. Many times that's the case. But this is, this is something for, for another class. For now, we have to, to think that we have uh, in, in the, for, for this picture that you have in front of you there, we have potential benefits. And of course, the, the, the more we are to the right, the more potential benefits we have. But those potential benefits uh, require business transformation, which is uh, in the, the Y axis there, okay? Uh, and then this, uh, this author starts saying, well, the first thing that we can do with technology, uh, and here we're always talking about IT, is what they call localized exploitation. Localized exploitation is we have a, a, pro a department has a problem or a person has a problem in, in an organization. What, what, let's say uh, the accountants of the, the company would like uh, uh, things that we could uh, automatize some of uh, his or her work. Uh, and we go there and we, we solve that problem. Okay, or or the, the production manager uh, would like something and we go there and solve that problem in a localized fashion, which means that it only affects that person or that little that, that department. Notice that uh, the business transformation there is, is little because in general, this localized exploitation means maybe uh, automating a process, but automating a process in general is doing uh, things exactly the way you did before, except that you do it more efficiently. Right? Automation is basically you change humans by by equipment or by software or whatever, and you're not changing what is done, right? So you still do the same thing, but you you do it more efficiently. You you, you try to be more um, uh, you, you try to improve your process. Uh, uh, it's basically in, in, in software engineering you call that you, what, what you need to do to do there you, you, you have to go there and talk to to the those that need the, the you know the, the, the new process and you will elicit their requirements right there is this uh, process in, in software engineering that is uh, requirements I think in English you, you, you say elicitation uh, requirements uh, under, the understanding of the requirements right no requirements requirement design. The, the, yeah, the, the design, but it's, 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 it's before the design, it's understanding the, the, the needs of those uh, that, you will, that you will fulfill with the system that you will design. Uh, how many people do you have to talk to to do localized exploitation? Sometimes one person, sometimes a few people, but in the same department and they, they all do the same thing. So you're, only, you're interviewing more, more than one person so that uh, nothing is missed, but... There is no, you don't think that there is going to be disagreements between the several people because basically they're saying, well, look, this is what I do. It would be great if uh, this could be, if we could use technology just to support this. If we go back to the other paper that we read for the first uh, class, uh, when we do local exploitation, we are probably happy of using this uh, possibility here. Uh, IT is only used to, if, if, it, if it doesn't hurt, it is already helping. Eventually, we could be, instead of doing this, we could also argue that we could be doing something like this, right? We, we, we could be actually improving the, 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 the process, but we're focused on the process. We're focused on improving efficiency with localized exploitation. An engineer can do that perfectly, uh, he or she would not need to come to my class, right? Uh, 
a, a, a computer scientist or a computer engineer, of course, depending if it's more soft or more hard or whatever, they could do localized exploitation. Uh, it doesn't involve the system here is, 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 is just a technical system. You don't have to consider, uh, the, let's say, the people or the organization too much because the organization that you're looking at is just that person or that little group of people. Uh, the author calls this an evolutionary level because it says you're doing what you did before more efficiently. Notice that evolution has a lot to do with increasing efficiency, right? Improving the methods, improving the process. More than, of course, you could also improve the product, uh, but think of this, uh, uh, the localized exploitation of as, as improving the process. Yeah, Vasim. Uh, sorry, just a quick question. Just make sure I'm, I'm, I'm following exactly based on examples that you gave us earlier. So, correct me if I'm wrong. Can we then say that the people from IT who would be involved in the localized exploitation could be even the ants? Yes, yes. Not even necessary, not Definitely. even necessary egos. No. Right? Not even monkeys. Not even monkeys. The, uh, exactly. Okay. Ants, ants do a great job here, you know, because Localized exploitation is uh, uh, the IT is um, is a an order taker. It goes there and asks, "What do you need?" And and then the the, the, the area tells, "We need this and that." And 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 and, and the ant there takes notes and provides precisely that. The, of course, the ant will will have to to develop some level of understanding of the process, but it doesn't have to connect that process to any other process, right? It, it it's it's yeah. very uh, the localized exploitation definitely does not require brains from the IT departments that uh, does not, no, uh, I'm, I'm being mean here, uh, does not require brains to, 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 to that, that allow for the, for the understanding of the big picture. It's order taker. Wh whatever you ask me, I will do. They don't need, the, the business understanding is all at the, 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 the customer's end, right? The, the, the customer tells, it's, it's order taking. I go there and, and, and ask, what is your problem? You tell me your problem, and I will only think of the practical or, or ways of solving that problem with the technical tools that I know. Right. So I do need to understand pure, your problem. Pure efficiency. Okay, pure efficiency, pure efficiency. right? But notice okay. the, the problem that we have here, and I and I say here that uh, anyone could do this, uh, thinking only at efficiency at the local local level, but we start generating problems for ourselves because the next possible level of uh, uh, improvement in, 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 in our organizations based on the use of IT uh, would be internal integration. Internal integration means uh, I want that process that my ant IT person there uh, has just, let's say, automated, I want it now to work together with a process that was, integra that, that was uh, uh, also automated in, in a different department. And then we start having a problem. Oh, that was not the problem that you asked me to solve. You wanted me to solve that in a localized way. And now you're telling me that because you have uh, your process is now automated, it would be good if it could collect data from the other departments. But notice, at this department, we did it, uh, we, we formatted our databases in one way. At the other department, they did it differently. So not, if, if you had already, if, if, you had, if instead of the ants, you had brought in uh, it wouldn't be the monkeys either, but someone with a larger, they would say, oh, look, we are, we are automating this now, but in the future, we will want to, to integrate this with, so we have to think that your process together with the process of the other department there, right? Do you understand that this is something that an ant would not be able to do? Uh, definitely. I think in that case, you need monkeys in that case to be able to see the other trees. At least, at least you would need uh, some, 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 some monkeys there. <laughs> uh, but but still many but but again and, 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 and I want you to stick to that idea that even my even these ideas of the ants monkeys yes. and, and and eagles is still a model. It helps us understand a few things, but but again, it's not a part. It's any model is a simplification of reality. Uh, but anyway, this guy. Yeah. So what what we needed here is maybe if that localized exploitation had already been done. By and when I went to the the previous model from the, the other, sorry, not not this one. I, uh, when I came here, I told you that uh, local exploitation was probably done with us with this perspective in mind. Where is it? 
local exploitation probably happened this way. Here we only have ants in the, the IT department, right? Of course, we, we, we may have a monkey there, but uh, if it had happened following this, uh, if, if there was someone who had a big picture, this guy could already have said, look, maybe let's not start doing that local uh, exploitation without thinking already about the possibility of that, that in the future we will want to, to do the internal integration. But it's very... I would say that when, when someone starts doing local exploitation in an organization, possibly they do not have a strategist for IT. At the beginning, and think of, we're talking about the 90s here, and, and these models are being built based on what they had learned in the 80s, right? Think of what comp what use companies uh, had for IT back then, right? Uh, so maybe there was not a strategist for, for, for IS. It started doing local, local exploitation, and then when it got to, to, to the internal integration, it became a challenge because a lot of the local localized exploitation had to be, let's say, redone, uh, at least to some extent. And here we start having some uh, issues, some problems that are very difficult for the ants in the IT department to deal with because, of course, each one of those localized exploitations has its own boss, right? Something was done at the accounting department, something was done at the marketing department, at the operations management department or whatever. And, uh, and then do you think that the ant from the IT department will be able to get there and tell people, look, we'll have to change your, your, your localized exploitation system now uh, because it's not, it, it, does not comply, it, 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 it does not work well together with the other department. Probably the manager of the department is going to say, well, they have to change theirs. I'm not going to change mine. It's working for me. Notice that the the boss of that department also has a monkey's perspective at the most, right? He wants his or her uh, um, department to work well and says, no, you're not going to touch this. Uh, it's working perfectly for us. They, they, they have to do the, 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 the way they, they, they want that. So notice that this internal integration already requires, maybe not only it's this, or, or it requires this, this uh, situation here where... Uh, there, 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 will be, uh, there will be the need for someone at a higher rank, but it will also, notice that uh, in this case here, we have the top management as a prioritizer, the top management of the organization. So it will probably, to do this internal integration here, we will already have probably the, 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 the big boss telling people, look, I know that you have all already done some automation of your processes, but we'll have to do some review of that and changes will probably be required because now we want to integrate the whole uh, company and that's definitely uh, important for us. Uh, the, the, the ego at the organization understands that. Right? Yes. So uh, he or she is going to say, it's important that we have this internal integration. So please uh, be nice to the guys from the IT department that will be there making changes to your system so that your system complies with the organization system as a whole. And notice, yeah. be nice to this guy because the guy at the IT department is probably at the same uh, uh, hierarchical level but has no influence over that department. The internal integration definitely requires the upper management to prioritize that, to say, well, this is important for us, even if they don't, do not participate directly. Okay? Can you see that it's uh, the, the potential benefit of uh, internal integration is, is, is much higher than the... the localized exploitation because you start getting some synergistic uh, benefits in addition to the the benefits of the automation of specific parts of the process. However, uh, the, the business transformation that is required uh, is also more complex uh, and it, it, it will involve uh, higher risks. Uh, it, it, it definitely needs involvement of the upper management to say this is important for the whole organization even if it will require your specific departments to put extra work into obtaining that. Uh, many companies uh, did this internal integration uh, by means of uh, uh, enterprise resource planning systems, uh, ERPs. Uh, many of them did that, that actually still in the 90s to escape the... Uh, have you heard of the, the, the Millennium Bug? Millennium, Millennium Bug. Uh, it, it, it was in... in well, when, 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 when the calendar was going to change from 1999, the last day of 1999, to the first day of 2000, 
there was a uh, well, there's a lot of ex speculation of what would happen to all systems that companies had that had been coded since the 60s, right? Including only two two digits for for the year. It would change from 99 to 00. zero. Uh, 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 the, uh, they call it the year 2000 uh, bug also. Uh, uh, may, I don't know if I'm. I'm let, let me let me check. I if, haven't heard of that actually. You, you haven't. Uh, let me no, see. I'm not sure if that's the way uh, they say it in English, so that, that this is why I'm checking here. Yeah, it came to to uh, to Portuguese. It's because it's probably my Millennium uh, results Millennium bug. Let me see. If, but it, it's uh, oh they they call it the uh, uh, year two K bug. That's which is a synonym. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, we call it, in Portuguese we, we call it Millennium bug. Uh, I'm not sure if that's a term that is usually used in English. Uh, but they, they call it year 2000. Uh, that, that was a huge problem. Uh, that was, in fact, uh, used by many, many of the SAP, uh, the German company, uh, and many of these companies that have enterprise resource planning programs or software, uh, of course, aware of this uh, possibility of, I mean, th there were air, air companies that did not fly, you know, uh, for, for, for the last days of the, that year uh, because they, 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 they feared that, there could be a plane crash. Uh, uh, big industries that uh, were con uh, concerned about what could happen to their machinery and everything, because uh, uh, well, uh, basically because uh, for many years programs had been coded with uh, two, 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 just two digits for the year, and they didn't know how those programs would interpret the change from ninety nine to zero zero. If if they would think that they had gone back to think of the financial industry, banks. What would have happen if uh, suddenly uh, they were trying to calculate interests uh, and, and 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 the year changed it from ninety nine and went back to so would would it calculate with uh, with negative interests and 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 people so it was a mess there was a lot of discussion it's it's an interesting topic for you to read about uh, but of course companies that sold uh, software uh, that could solve this problem here uh, well they, they 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 profited on that. Many other companies, of course, had to like, re. Yeah, go on, Milch. Not like the same thing um, Charles was saying. I believe in his article he quoted at one point that people should focus more on um, vulnerabilities than opportunities sometimes. So I believe that's what. I mean, it makes sense that this was a vulnerability because it was expected and then they capitalized on it. Which yeah. Is Companies capitalize on that, uh, and, and many companies, uh, for, for Carl was talking about infrastructural technology, SAP was saying, look, you don't have to redevelop, for, for companies that had been working on localized exploitation and, and even some internal integration on their own, they were saying, we have software, we have a solution for your problem. Remember, they, companies always have the solution. We have a, a solution. You don't have to worry about the, the millennium bug or the year 2000 bug. Uh, just, you would have to spend a lot of money fixing that. Um, uh, you will have to, and many companies, in fact, did that. Re, uh, rehired um, people that had already retired to write code in COBOL, for example. COBOL was a, a, a computer language that was used a lot in the in the seventies and eighties. Uh, and banks banks still have a lot of code in COBOL, uh, but there was no the, 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 there were no people able to, to to code in that language any longer. They simply rehired. Uh, 70 year old uh, uh, software developers and everything at a very expensive price because of course those guys wanted to, to relax and, and be in their comfort zone at home uh, but they were attracted back to industry to try and solve the millennium bug but what I'm saying is uh, uh, when you have sorry, where, where am I here uh, when you have a, 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 a problem uh, like like the, the, the millennium bug or, or you 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 have an opportunity to redo or, or to throw away your localized exploitation and to bring in either new or develop new code already thinking of internal integration or buy from someone a, a, a package that is called a solution, right? Uh, that hopefully will be the solution for your, your problems. But notice that in, the internal integration is already much more complex. It already requires a level of understanding of the business that was not from, from the IT people also. And it, it probably also requires that the IT is not just an order taker any longer saying, what is that you need? 
it's probably offering its services as a consultant also and saying, look, uh, uh, and, and of course for that it needs uh, it needs a, a better understanding of, of, of business in general. So they, they could say, well, we, we, understand, we, we are technical people. Uh, we're not here to dictate how you should do things, but considering that we, all, we, we also have a, some awareness or some, some understanding of businesses in general and everything, what, don't you think that maybe if you change your process a little bit here, it will fit better with the process of the other department over there. So it, it already required that. Not that we had people to do that. We did not have uh, good uh, uh, good egos in the the, the IS, uh, in the, the technology area. Right? In fact, this was one of the reasons why we started having these information systems undergraduate programs around the world. People that needed to know technology but could speak English, <laughs> as, as Vasim's boss would say, but could also uh, understand the business to make sure that when when you reach this integration level, IT could already be suggesting things uh, because IT understood at least partially how the business went. Okay, so but these are still uh, if, even integration is we're still trying to be more effic efficient. We want our several departments to 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 work uh, efficiently on their own, which would be the localized exploitation. But we also want that to, to happen in a way that we foster the synergis, uh, synergistic uh, opportunities that exist uh, uh, for them to work together. Basically, what we, one wants here with the, the ERPs, the Enterprise Resource Planning uh, Systems, was that uh, salespeople, for example, could only sell uh, the, the, the products that the manufacturing part of the, the company was able to, to produce. This may seem strange, but uh, in many companies, salesmen are commissioned by the sales that they, they make, not necessarily by the, the products that the company is able to, to provide their customers with. And of course, if salespeople sell something that the company cannot deliver, uh, it will cause more costs to the company, or more problems to the company than, than the solution it brings, right? So this internal uh, integration was, uh, uh, was an important uh, evolutionary step, but it was also basically an attempt to become more efficient or effective more efficient right it's, we're still talking about the process evolutionary steps here are more about improving the process based on the, the new technologies that we have available okay then uh what happens well notice that uh, uh they have this uh, a line here a horizontal line separating the evolutionary levels to what they call the uh, the revolutionary levels, and the revolutionary levels are the ones where you're concerned not about not as much about the how, uh, the, not as much about the the, the uh, doing more of what we already do, but about rethinking what we do. So it's it's it, it's it's more about uh, being effective. Although uh, the business process redesign and the business network redesign still have a lot to do with the process, okay? But it's uh, over here in the revolutionary levels, the business transformation is higher, uh, and and what when, uh, what what happens there is that you're thinking, well, look, this technology allows me to do different things from what I did in the past, uh, uh, and they're more radical. But there, the, the, the business transformation is, is, is much greater, but of course the potential benefit is also greater. So they, they refer here to the possibility of redesigning the process. In this case, it's not uh, automating what we already have. It's not just doing whatever we do in a, a more, or, or faster or, or, or with less, uh, less errors. Uh, it is uh, rethinking if what, we, uh, if the process that we had in the past still makes sense. Uh, you, you may say it's still efficiency because right, uh, we're thinking about redesigning the process. Uh, redesign the, uh, the, the process is, is all about efficiency. But redesigning the process is not making the process I already have better. Uh, uh, it, it, redesigning the process is finding new ways of doing it. Right? Uh, uh, and and, and is this something that uh, ants and monkeys can do? Definitely not. Right? Redesigning the process definitely... Need a business language. Need a business language. At least it will be 
uh, we, we're going to, 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 to be doing things like this, but it's more, more probably redesigning the process. We're already doing something like, uh, not this one, like, Probably we're doing something like this, right? We understand, uh, we clearly understand what we need uh, from uh, uh, what our business is, but we're finding other ways of doing, different ways of doing it using IT. It's, it's not doing the, sa uh, the same thing. Uh, uh, well, let's say it, it, it is doing the same thing. The business has not changed, but the way of doing it changes and changes radically. And we need to have this, uh, this uh, perspective here of the technology architects. Uh, in the 90s, there was this movement called uh, uh, process re-engineering. Let me go back here, considering that we already have here Wikipedia open. Process re-engineering. Many people uh, at organizations claimed... Process re-engineering? I don't know what I did wrong. Huh? Re-engineering. Re-engine, well, whatever. Pro search for process re-engineering. Yeah. I think it was the first, uh, yes, the first one. Business process re-engineering. Business process re-engineering. Uh, oh, it's, it's this one here, yes. Mm -hmm. Or, or re-engineering is also okay. Uh, business process re-engineering or simply re-engineering. I, I think uh, maybe this, th those are terms that were used a lot. Uh, and basically, but this one, uh, it's a, yeah, it's, it's the business process for engineering, probably the, the, the link here. Business process, for, you, you probably, uh, this is also a topic of, of software engineering uh, these days, right? People talk about business process for engineering. And basically what we are trying to do here uh, is, uh, in the business process for engineering, is rethinking the process, considering that we have technology that allows it to be completely different. Engineering meant start uh, the planning of the new process uh, based on a, a blank sheet of paper. So don't, don't bring your preconceived ideas from, from the ways you did before. Technology may allow you to, do the same, to, 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 to make the same product in a completely different way. Uh, this is not easy. Uh, I remember, for example, when I was, uh, uh, when, when I was uh, still as an undergraduate uh, student, uh, I, I had a part-time job at the university. In fact, I was, it was not even a part-time job. It was more like a, I, I was a, 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 a professor's uh, student's uh, supporter or something, a, a, a teaching assistant or something like that. Uh, and I was always in the, in, the, in the informatics department, which was the one that hired me. Uh, and one day, uh, this was probably in 19... 89, 1988, 1988 maybe, we were just starting to, to get the, 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 the first um, personal computers into the university and the library called my boss, the dean of the, the, the IT department um, and asked uh, if he could give them uh, some advice on, on the system that they wanted to build for the library. The, the library before that, well, you, you definitely did not get to see libraries like that unless maybe the... the the preschool library, they, they had some shelves with, uh, with boxes, with cards, and cards that had, let's say, the name of the, the, the author, and uh, the cards that were, let's say, indexed by the name of the author. Then they, would, they had another box where the, the books were indexed by the, the title uh, of, the, uh, of the book. And then a third box that where the, the books were, were organized or indexed uh, by the topic or the subject. They had those three, so it was actually three shelves with boxes, but one where the indexing was by the author, the title, or the or the subject. And then uh, the notice that these guys wanted to do some uh, localized exploitation because when I arrived there, they said we, we we just want to confirm with you that we are we are proposing the right solution. They wanted to have three microcomputers there in the library, one where they would index the books by the author, the other one where they would index the books by the title, and the third one where they would use, uh, uh, or they, they would do it by the topic. And I said, well, you know, uh, but I noticed I was an ant, right? I was not, I shouldn't be, uh, I, they were not expecting that I was telling them uh, something different, but I, 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 it didn't make any sense to me. I was thinking about some business process for engineering and say, one, one computer is enough, right? One database, and uh, three index uh, keys, and uh, and you just uh, depending on what, but it was 
something that the new technology allowed it, that the previous technology that was cards in boxes did not allow, right? They were not prepared for that. I, I tried to explain it to them and they said, no, 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 you don't understand our process. We need, we want to replicate what we do here. And then, of course, I could not be arguing with them. I was, I don't know, 20, 21 years old or something. I said, well, talk back to, to my boss. I, uh, you know, I, I, I think that you can do better. And then uh, I, it turned out that it was months until they got convinced that they, they needed to do some business process for engineering. Uh, there was a possibility that the new technology allowed them to organize their, their let's say, the data about their books in a way that was impossible with the technology they had before, but was a, a much better use, much more efficient use of uh, technology at that stage. Okay, uh, but it's tough to do because uh, you uh, you could say because people are in their comfort zone. Indeed, they they they're in the comfort zone that they say, well, this works for us. You want us to to change into to something that we don't understand, uh, and we don't. We don't know if it's going to work. They, they, they have that impression that they are the ones who know the process. They, they're the ones that know what a library does and that uh, the IT people will, will not be able to bring uh, new knowledge about the business to them. Uh, in, th in, in that kind of situation, you have to invite people to a business process for engineering and say, look, forget about the way you did this in the past. I will show you a technology and, and, and tell me if this technology will allow to do it uh, in, in a way that will be more efficient than what you had before. But get rid of, of, of the ideas that you had from the past because this new technology allows something different. It was very, very tough times, this re-engineering, because, again, it takes people out of their comfort zone uh, and, and does that in a radical way because many times even the skills that they had do not uh, belong any longer. So notice... And, and in that case, it's not that uh, sometimes people understood that the new technology would do better, but they, will, they, they were going to say, will they still need a librarian? Will they still... Notice, it's, 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 it's fair uh, concerns that people have, and it's fair concerns that the egos have to think about, because these people can uh, sabotage the process uh, if, they, if, if you don't consider their, 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 their own interests, uh, or they can uh, simply not help the process happen Right, so it's it's important that you you understand uh, people and and provide them. Of course, that, then it will depend on, on your style of leadership and how much you concern for your people. But you could anticipate that they they will be put in a situation that they, they will feel fragile, and and you could uh, provide the, this possibility of change already, giving them a way out or retraining them uh, for, for for the new for, for for the new work that they will have to do or whatever. But again. The, the potential benefit of, of business process for engineering is higher, but the business level, the, the degree of business transformation is also higher. We can go even further than that uh, and think of uh, the business network redesign. Uh, the business process, well, the business network involves who is who is performing the process. Right in the uh, in the past. Uh, well, who's, who's performing the, the, the business? Everyone is involved in the business in the organization, but uh, do, uh, you, you start thinking, does it make sense for us to do this internally in this organization or should we outsource parts of what we do? I'll, it depends. It depends, but I would say there is a huge push towards outsourcing uh, when, we, when we start having more IT available because IT allows you to connect to an outsourced party almost if, if this outsourced party were a department in your company, right? It makes it easy to outsource, uh, but, but to, uh, to outsource the, 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 the part of the, the business without making it disconnected. Uh, we, we can outsource and still have it very well connected, right? Mm. This is why we, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sure that you've heard more the, the words outsourcing than the words insourcing. We could even try and see yeah. that. Maybe, maybe you, 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 if, yeah. you, if that's not the case, you can even check Google Trends and look for the words outsourcing and insourcing. The, the push towards outsourcing is greater than the push towards insourcing. Why? Because technology makes it possible for you to hire someone outside a company uh, and, and, and hire someone who, who is better skilled than, than, your own, uh, than, than what you could do inside. But you, 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 now you can integrate that by 
by redesigning your network, you can you can integrate these people in a way that in the past it was impossible. Yeah. Right? There was a time, for example, here in Brazil in the 1960s, Volkswagen Brazil, the the, the automakers, uh, the German automakers, they had a, a plant in the country and they had the largest bakery in the country. Bakery to to bake breads. And then you would say, nowadays we would say, why on hell would Volkswagen, a car manufacturer or a car assembler, have a bakery? Simply because they had to feed their, their workers. Uh, and it was, at that stage, it was simpler, easier, probably more efficient, more costly uh, or less costly to, to have their own bake, uh, bakery in the, the manufacturing plant than hire uh, an external agent to to bake bread for for them to feed their their, their employees, right? Yeah. And that definitely makes sense. Why the author here actually gave the example of KitKat when they outsourced it to Los Los Yeah Los and Martin Los and Martin or Los and I mean, sometimes instead of having like a department in that, or a section in that factory with specific equipments, well, they may be expensive, they may not be, but just to do this task, I mean. I can get to into a contract with a company that specializes in this that already has the capability of doing it and just get the job done for a specific agreement amount that he does not Yeah. And and it maybe it's it's flexible in the sense that when you need their work, you, you you hire them. When you don't, you don't you do not have to spend money on keeping a department that is uh, underused, for example. Of course, notice yeah. Oh, sometimes you can stay with them on the long term contract, mm -hmm. not even oh, yeah. their job. Yeah. And it will still be much cheaper than having them in source. Yeah. And, and there's another, uh, but there's a, there's a challenge there. If you already have a department, an internal department, it's very difficult for you to say, well, we've, we've done some calculations here. It's easier and cheaper or whatever, or more efficient or even more effective. Not, notice that it can be more efficient and more effective to, to outsource this because there's, there's a specialist there and we are not specialists. It's difficult to do that because it's almost like cutting your own arm, right? You, 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 it's, it's people that you have lunch with that you're going to say, we don't want you any longer. Besides, from a business perspective, uh, um, firing people or, or dismantling a department is, is, uh, gives signals uh, really bad because it, seem, it, it makes people think, well, when, when they need us, uh, they hire us. When they, they don't, they just simply they, they kick us out. This is this is bad for those who are who are fired, but it's also uh, bad for the for the morality, uh, for the for the, um, the, the the reputation of the company with its own employees, because everyone is going to think, well, am, how much does this company care for? Insecure, insecure environment. Exactly. Insecure. Yeah, it, it creates. It. So notice, it's not easy to do any of these, right? Uh, the, the business process redesign already changes things in a way that it takes people out of their comfort zone. Uh, but but it does it in a way that sometimes you say, well, I better not touch that. The same thing happens here with the, uh, the business network redesign. In fact, I have to tell you one thing. I, I, I love this, this simple model. I think that uh, it, it expresses the truth of what most organizations should uh, do with respect to, to the use of a new IT technology. Uh, but I find these revolutionary levels very difficult to implement. It's tough to do to do these revolutionary levels uh, inside an organization. And I, although I love this model, uh, 25 years later, it's it's sort of comfortable for me to say, I do think that all these revolutionary levels happen. Many times they do not happen inside the organization. Many times this is the opportunities for the startups, for 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 new companies to to look at a specific sector or a specific business and say. Well, they all work in a specific way that was the old way. The technology now allows me to redesign the process, to, to, to conceive a, a different network uh, uh, of, uh, of partners. Uh, and even, well, the last, uh, but not least, the, the last uh, box here at the top, to, re to redefine the scope of the business. This is all possible, but the, the companies that are there, the, the incumbent companies, cannot do this uh, at least they cannot do it with the vigor or the, with the strength that they, they, they should because it, it, goes, it goes against their, uh, the structures that they already have. I, I keep saying that, I mean, uh, we, we take decisions uh, along uh, life and organizations keep taking decisions, developing strategies along their, 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 their lives. Let's say, say that organizations also have lives. And the decisions that we take 
of course, they're all important, so we, we need to take decisions, but the decisions that we have already taken determine the decisions that we can still take. So companies cannot, they're not completely free to decide their future, considering that they already have a past. Right? Uh, for me, the, the, great, the greatest example of, of how difficult it is to embrace these revolutionary levels is to see what happened to Kodak, for example, the photography company. Right? Kodak was the, the, the leader in photography for the, the whole 20th century. They were leaders of a market for over 100 years. And they were simply wiped out. Why? Because they were not able to, to, do the, to, to redesign their processes according to the new technologies. They were not able to redesign the, the, the network that, that, that produced those, those products and maybe redefine the scope of their business. They were actually, in fact, one of the companies that developed the digital film. They were in the, in the, in the film industry, so they, they were interested in, in, in figuring out where the, 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 uh, what, what were the trends for the future, where the world was going. They, they started developing uh, the, 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 the digital film, but they could not get rid of their old uh, process. For example, they were, they, they were the owners of many silver mines around the world because silver was something very important to the, to the chemistry process of uh, film development. Right? So they, they had, over 100 years, they had become a strong company because they, they had uh, taken control of the raw materials, let's say in this case silver, uh, that, were, that was necessary for, for, for the film industry. And then when, they, when that business has the possibility of transforming itself because there is new technology that allows a, a complete shift, it's very difficult for them to change. So they are very reluctant. They, at the beginning they say, uh, well, the, uh, uh, the, let's say the, 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 the digital cameras are a gadget, but they are very expensive and the quality is not good. That, that was what they said in the 90s. Later on, they said, well, it's becoming cheaper, but still not very good. Later on, they had to say, well, now it's cheap and, and apparently it's good enough for most people. But if you are a, 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 a professional photographer, you will never think of using digital photography. And then later on, they saw even the digital, the, 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 the professional photographers going to digital and, and they had to close, shut their doors. Why? Because they were not able to take these revolutionary steps. Uh, so I, I say, looking at this model, 25, it's very convenient to look at it 25, 30 years later, 30 years later, uh, and say, I don't see the revolutionary levels happening inside a company, uh, inside an organization, or it's very difficult. We do have examples of companies that were able to do that. But in general, they do happen, but they happen in the industry. The industry changes with new players because the old players, many times, uh, they are trapped by their own, what I call it, their own trajectory of success. They were successful in the past. What made them successful will make them fail simply because they become too rigid uh, uh, to, to, to go on. Okay. Uh, but I guess this is, this is uh, it for this model. Um, I don't know if you, if you have any other, any other impressions about what you read or any other ideas that you would like to share. I could see uh, that's how the companies of uh, Apple and Nokia, we can take the example of that, uh, how Apple makes the digitalization in their company and how uh, Nokia could be able to do that. Yeah, no, no, Nokia is a good example of a company that was not able to, to, to take the revolutionary steps, definitely, mm -hmm. right. Uh, Apple, uh, well, my, my, my understanding today is that all companies will fail one day. And when they fail, it's because they were not able to take the revolutionary steps, right? Uh, Apple has already had a chance of failing, uh, and they had to bring Steve Jobs back in, right, in the past. Uh, it was some radical change there. He had been kicked out of the, 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 the company for, you know, and then they had to rehire, re, uh, rehire him, and maybe he, he was able to keep pushing uh, uh, this. I, I'm not sure if what uh, of what uh, Apple does really mean uh, uh, a business corporate redefinition or, or, or even these uh, processes here. I, I think that's that Apple uh, Apple is still following the same trajectory of success of the past. I, I, I can I can I'm not sure of the uh, we're, we're not sure even about the past right but I, I'm definitely not sure about the future but if I had to bet on something I'd say that there will be a time where uh, it will happen to Apple the same that happened to Nokia. some some companies have shorter cycles others have larger cycles 
but it seems to me that all of them end up being trapped by their own success at, at some stage. And the reason for that is not that they're stubborn, that they they cannot see the or 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 you know strategize about the future. It's simply because the decisions that they have already made in the past make it difficult for them to choose freely a, a, a different path. So they tend to to choose a path that is conditioned by their previous decisions. Uh, but again, uh, uh, I, I do think that, they, for example, IBM is a company that I think that did, definitely did some uh, business scope uh, redefinition. If we think of IBM as a, a hardware company uh, from, you know, for, for, for large computers in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the 1900s, uh, it's now more like a, a, a service company. Uh, it's still in the IT field, but it, it has changed a lot. Some companies do change. Uh, they they probably in changing. They many times they also lose relevance. Uh, IBM is still a very very big company, but it's not as as big as it, as it were some forty years ago, right? At, at least another another good example also similar to Nokia is Sony Ericsson as well. Like they just fail to compete and and be like as a tough peer for among the others. Uh -huh. And also Windows Windows Mobile. I don't know if you guys are aware of this. It came out at the beginning of 2009 till 2010. It was a very trendy thing. In fact, it was the very first uh, operating system for iMate mm. telephones. There, there was a brand called iMate and it was impressive. And it was the very first phone that comes with a touchable screen. Mm -hmm. Like it was a touch screen mm -hmm. and they came up with this concept and they used to come with the pen, but they didn't last so long. Like by 2011, when the first release of Android came to the market, they just stopped doing that. Yeah. Like they continued a little bit with HTC until HTC washed their hands off uh, Windows Mobile that product and they just yeah. went to uh, Android. Yeah. It's uh, of course we, we 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 never know the all the details of any strategy of a company. P people who are there could say could, could 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 inform us better of what went right or what went wrong. But even them, you know, you know they're so strat strategizing is is always trying to see among the, the alternatives that we have, which ones provide us with the better chances of being successful in the future. And they also always consider the investment that we have already done. There's no people talk about sunk costs. So, right, in, in the term sunk costs in, in economics means well investment that has already been made that we should not even we don't want to recover that. That's but so so some some costs should be sh should not uh, uh, influence the decisions that we we make. But it's impossible not to to at least to some extent. Uh, there are ideas that are too too deep in our minds to be shifted. Uh, uh, but anyway, I I, I, li I like the model. Uh, uh, I definitely see all these things happening in organizations. Uh, uh, just that the revolutionary levels here are the, the more business transformation it, that is required, the more difficult it is to implement the, the transformation because uh, th there are many other forces uh, internal to the companies and also external, even even uh, the customers uh, could be or, or so that there, there are forces that prevent companies to change that radically. This is this is really great because this provides small companies with a chance of uh, getting into the market. Otherwise. Yeah. Uchi, Uchi and, and anyone with a, with a great idea and many times with little resources would not be able to... to I'm assuming that uh, Uchi has little resources as most startup uh, companies have, right? Maybe he's going to tell us here that uh, no, no, resources is not a problem. But in general, small companies get into the, the, the business because they are able to see these things here. It's clear to them that uh, the companies that are there are doing something different to what they should be doing. But they still keep in their track simply because that's that's the way they they, they have been uh, moving for or having been pushed by 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 their leaders and and and, and actually by the by the even the environment. Uh, let's get into the, our second paper for today. Same uh, same Venkatraman uh, again with his colleague uh, Henderson, 1998 now. Real strategies for virtual organizing. Um, yeah, in the nineties they they were using uh, all different uh, expressions uh, to refer to what I believe we now uh, call uh, virtual transformation. So in this uh, in this paper here, uh, the authors uh, present us with a model in which they have three vectors that they thought that they were important vectors or the important drivers in which IT could help organizations uh, build a 
a competitive edge based on, on the use of technology. So, um, as usual in their papers, we do have a model, and the model in this case is shown in this figure here. Virtual organizing three vectors and three stages. Uh, let's first uh, focus on, on, on the vectors, um, customer, inter uh, customer interaction. Uh, so the, the authors believed that, the, that IT could be used as a means to, uh, to provide uh, companies with a virtual encounter with their customers. Right? The, the possibility of interacting with their customers in, in, in real time, but even if, uh, uh, well, uh, interacting with their customers in a way that they could develop a better understanding of the customer's uh, needs and, and, and wishes. Uh, again, the Industrial Revolution was an age of uh, designers creating uh, a future that they believed to be what interested their customers or so uh, developers creating products and pushing those products into the markets. Uh, IT has allowed us to rever uh, reverse this and, and instead of, uh, of conceiving products and push to the markets, uh, it allowed us to start trying to understand what the market needs or wishes and then based on that build products that are uh, pulled by the market. Right? Uh, and uh, we, we see this in uh, IT was an important driver for that. It's, it was not the only driver, but it was an important driver. Uh, of course, it, when we think of other industries that do, do not involve IT so directly, uh, we think, for example, of the Toyota system as being a, a system that went uh, that, that addressed the same issue. Uh, Toyota noticed that uh, most uh, Western car manufacturers produced cars and pushed those cars into the market. Uh, and, and Toyota thought, well, maybe it's, it's wiser if instead of pushing cars into the market, we wait until the customer shows a real demand for, that, for, for a specific uh, car. Uh, so are you familiar with the Toyota system or the Toyota uh, production system? Toyota production system, no. Toyota. Cars, yes. Right. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's, Okay, so the Toyota, Toyota production system uh, in, in, in inspired uh, all the quality movements of the 1980s, uh, mainly quality in the terms of, uh, of ensuring that products uh, were not only, did not only have the intrinsic quality of, of, of being, uh, you know, strong and, and reliable, but also having the quality of fitting the customer's needs. Uh, and what uh, Toyota uh, uh, noticed was that uh, whenever you first produced and then sold something, uh, there was a chance that whatever you produced was not exactly what the customer wished, and then you would have to sell at a discount price, right? Uh, I, I can assure you that whenever you go to any shop, at any retail store, and uh, you see a promotion, it's either one of two things. A promotion is either one of the two things. Either someone was mistaken and produced something that the market didn't want. And uh, so now there is a difference between price and value. The customers value the, 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 the product uh, less uh, than, 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 the, the, than the company wished. And, and, and then they have to put the price down so that the value is higher than the price. Right? That's a possibility. <laughs> Uh, and the other possibility for promotion is, well, the, 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 the company uh, realizes that the customer still does not understand the, the, the product or does not understand uh, the product the, the, the way it should uh, and therefore doesn't value it. And then they, they sell it at a lower price so that the customer perceives value. And after that, they, want to, they, they intend to increase the price again. Right? Uh, I, I think uh, we've already discussed the difference between cost, price and value, the first class. Um, uh, engineers are, are very focused on cost. Uh, customers are very focused on value. Uh, the price is something in between cost and value. Uh, uh, let's say a, 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 a suggestion of a, 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 a value at which you can you, you will have a transaction. Right? Uh, so, but going back to, to Toyota, 
Toyota noticed that uh, if, if they produced a lot of cars and the customer didn't uh, was not too, 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 too keen on that car, they would have to make a, a, a promotion, a liquidation, a sales, right? Uh, and they said, instead of doing that, let's work in a different way. Uh, the customer will work almost if the customer ordered the products. It was not that uh, uh, Toyota didn't have any, any cars off the shelf to sell, but they would only have, let's say, one car at the, the at the, the car dealer, and then when that car was sold to a, to a customer, then the, the dealer would say, would, would pull another car, would say, please send me another one. And that meant that uh, Toyota would man manufacture the next car. So they, instead of producing in, in, in continuous mass production schemes, they, the Toyota started producing according to the demands. This is the difference between uh, what we, we, we call either uh, a pushed, pushed to the market or pulled by the market. Toyota developed this way of working in which its products were pulled by the market. Developing this possibility of customer interaction with the, with the, cust uh, with the customer is also uh, has, has the same intention. Uh, you want to make sure that the customer tells you what the customer needs. And, and then you, you and then you do that instead of trying to guess what, what the customer wants. Uh, an obvious way of, uh, uh, of promoting something that you already have, and, and mainly based on the, the, older, the older perspective, the, the perspective of pushing to the market, was provide the customer with a, a remote experience with the products and services. So you already have your products, and you thought this, this is more like a, a, a way of advertising what you already have. It's the old-fashioned way of doing it. But... Again, uh, it's an, uh, the old-fashioned way of doing it using the new technology. So here, what we are doing is we are we are um, uh, we're using the new technology to make sure that the customer gets aware of what we have to offer. Right? But the old way, industrial revolution way, you, you show what you have. This what what they call stage two is already the new way because they say allow the customer to dynamically customize the products he or she is buying uh, well customization well, what is the difference between customization and personalization uh, for me the first mini difference I would, like first of all I would think that they are synonyms but but I think personalization is more like how can I say make a product that is that that could be totally dedicated to a specific case or a client or someone perfect huh? customization i think changing the default features in general without being oriented to deliver it to someone in particular or mm -hmm. some entity that, that's how i would personally yeah, that, 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 that seems that's yeah. yeah go on Archie. I would say customization is based on objects that already exist for the product, but personalization is putting in new features that are personal to you mm -hmm. that doesn't have maybe. It's not a completely new thing, right? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. That, that's what what uh, the author means here. Uh, if you if you if you want to do personalization, you start at the conceptual model, uh, conceptual time. You you do all the design for that customer. You you you, you manufacture and you deliver. Uh, so, for example, hands hands craftsmen uh, do that. Uh, something that is done from scratch uh, and already with the customer in focus. Uh, customization is you have a basic product, and then uh, you just deal with uh, some of the accessories, some 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 of the some of its features, uh, in a way that it's perceived by the customer as a personalized product. But you, as the manufacturer or the, the producer, do not have. Uh, does not. Uh, you, you do not have to 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 go through a complete uh, uh, through a process that is completely dedicated to that specific customer because this increases a lot the costs. Basically, what you want with customization is to have the benefits of mass production, producing in large scales. Uh, with some of the benefits of, uh, pers of personalization, which means uh, 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 meeting specific customers' needs um, or, or, or focus specifically on, on each one of the customers, right? Technology helps us do that because you can put the customer 
him or herself to customize the products. For example, when the customer is, um, well, selecting uh, check boxes on a web page saying uh, what color the product should be, maybe uh, some specific characteristics about the, the model. So there, there may be a lot of uh, customization items that the customer is able to, to decide on, on their own uh, and, and, and which will help uh, you provide the customer with a more personalized experience. But of course, uh, this customization does not, is not a miracle, right? Uh, it involves also some adjustments to the second uh, vector here, which is uh, what the author is called asset configuration or virtual sourcing. Uh, so the first is, if, if we think of, uh, of a company, a company relates to customers at one end and suppliers at the other. This asset configuration is thinking about how, to, how a company should uh, relate to its suppliers to the supply side of the, the, of the operation, right? And notice that to allow for dynamic customization, one important thing is that your, 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 your production is based on, on uh, modules. Your product has to be modularized. How is modularization related to customization? Basically, a product that is modular means that it has different parts that can be put together easily it's easy to assemble them together but it's also easy to replace one part by another part because the interfaces are very well defined right a modular product is like a a, a lego uh toy you know lego the the the, the, uh, the, the danish uh, um kids toy uh, you can uh, take a lot of lego uh, uh, pieces and they are they're all uh, Lego is modular and then you can build a house or you can build a ship or you can build uh, a truck or whatever depending on how you you put those modules together you build products that are very let's say customized so uh, the suggestion here by these authors is that you build you you you, 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 you plan you design your products based on on modular uh, pieces because then when the customer uh, defines uh, what he or she wants, you can easily assemble the product from those pieces and give the, the, the customer the impression that it was um, uh, built specifically for, for him or for her, when in fact it was built uh, out of uh, a very standard pieces, giving the impression that it was uh, uh, a personalized product. Uh, Think, for example, one, one very good example of this that has nothing to do with, uh, with IT is um, a pizza place, a pizza restaurant. Right? Pizza is a very customized product. There is a part of it that is uh, the same for everyone. The, the pasta, the, 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 sorry, the, 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 the base is the same. And then you just change what goes on top. But the part that takes more effort uh, and, and involves more time in preparing is actually the base. After that, you know the ingredients go there, and in five minutes you have the the, the pizza already ready to be to be eaten. So a pizza you, you can deliver ex the pizza that the customer wants, but uh, usually uh, the customer will not be able to to tell the pizza man, oh, I want my my pizza with with a very well, well, let's say with a uh, with a sweet taste to the to the base or what? No, no, the, the base is the same for everyone. The topping, what you put on top, is that changes. So that's the difference between customization and and um, and, and, and and personalization. Uh, notice that pizza uh, 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 pizza was not made modular with that intent. I think, right? Maybe it was. Uh, I, I mean, I, I I don't know the history of pizza to know if at the beginning it was only one flavor and then. Suddenly, people started saying, "Well, I would like to have something different." And then they thought, "Oh, so let's first do the base, and then wait until the customer has something to say. And when the customer tells what he or she wants, then we, we finish the pizza." Right? Uh, but it, it definitely benefits from from uh, sourcing uh, from, from from being modular, and it allows us to provide a product that is more valuable to the customer. Uh, the modularization is good for 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 customization. It allows customization, but it also allows, if you're thinking, uh, if we're if we're thinking, if we're looking, let's say, um, 
towards the the, the, the suppliers, it also uh, allows for what uh, the authors here call in, in stage two, uh, process interdependence. I've already talked a little bit about this uh, in the previous paper, when I told you that uh, uh, companies uh, can redefine their processes, including uh, outsourcing activities. You cannot outsource anything if your product is not modular. Right? You can only outsource if there is some modularity because you want, you need that whatever is done by your supplier is can easily connect to what you do in your company afterwards, right? So, so they have to be uh, easily uh, connected to one another. And, and, and this is the quality of something that is modular. Okay. Uh, so uh, uh, process yeah, interdependence is, uh, uh, is, is, is dependent on, on on the product being modular, which means, for example, that um, possibly a company like uh, like Apple finds it more difficult to develop this second asset than uh, than another. Well, let's say I'm thinking about a PC star or, or, and a, than a regular than a regular manufacturer. Although, yeah, although they they also source modules to to suppliers, but but Apple differently to, to what happens with other uh, companies, seems to still prefer to have a very integral um, product. Uh, in fact, that even makes it difficult for, for you to use, uh, to, 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 let's say, to bring modules from other suppliers to work together with, uh, with Apple products. Well, I, think, I think Apple has been like doing this for quite a long time, which is like, it, ha it used to have the interdependency along with Intel when it comes to MacBooks, mm -hmm. like for a long, long time until probably 2020, uh, 21, if I'm not mistaken, they have been getting the CPUs from Intel, mm -hmm. like totally from Intel. And starting from 2021 or 2020, they've just totally eliminated this interdependency and they decided to make their own M chips. Their own processors, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Apple is one of those companies that probably go against uh, um, the tr the trends that I, I told you. We usually uh, uh, hear more about outsourcing than insourcing, right? Uh -huh. That's the, that's the general trend. But there are companies that uh, go in a different way. And in fact, there is no uh, in, in business. There is no single way of succeeding in business. There are companies that sometimes you see two two companies competing in the same market. They're doing strategies that are almost the opposite to one another, and both are at least relatively successful, right? <clears throat> so uh, there is a trend. That there's definitely a trend towards what uh, the authors are, are explaining here with their model, uh, a trend for 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 module uh, for, for modular products that allow for digital customization, uh, dynamic customization, uh, that allow for process interdependence between uh, departments, but also between companies or among companies. That could even lead to to the the, the, the third stage in asset configuration uh, is what the authors call here resource coalition. Um, I, I find it difficult to to make a difference between process interdependence and resource coalition, other than saying that resource coalition is when process interdependence happens perfectly. Right. So uh, there are there are companies that work so smoothly together that uh, an outsider when observing, let's say, if we were a Martian, uh, a Martian alien trying to understand Earth, here yeah, they would say, well, I look into that process and it seems that it's one single entity, but it's just very well coordinated. So the resource coalition is a very well coordinated process interdependence uh, um, process. You, you've probably seen that the author uh, refers to, to companies, for example, like Dell uh, as an example. Dell in the in the 1990s, the, the late 1990s, let's say was was an example of uh, of this situation here because Dell allowed its customers to uh, to to uh, let's say customize their computers online through a website. And I'm talking here about what happened in the late late 90s, in the early 2000s also. Uh, now uh, now I don't think that if if, if you go to Dell's website. Uh, you, it, I'm not sure how, how customizable it is these days, right? For for PCs, but but at the same time, I understand that the PC market has changed severely since then, right? Uh, it's really interesting that whatever example this author gave about the Dell uh, process of uh, customizing your own PC, 
it is still living till this very day on Apple application. Mm-hmm. You have the option to customize your MacBook. Mm-hmm. Jay, like you don't want a pre-made one. You want to customize, including the model, the, the color, of course, not the model, and uh, the features inside of it, the hardware, RAM, yeah. etc. So it's interesting that this, like as you just said before, these papers are all like have definitely stood the test of time. Yeah. Like, till this moment, they're yeah. still yeah. over there. Yeah. Um, more or less the same concept. Yeah. Yeah, and 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 uh, 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 I, I, sometimes I, I have students, that, and, and this is why I was defending myself from the first day, saying, "Look, the texts are all being are going to be very old texts, but they are they are they are texts that I like because they still have value. If you if you of course if you raised the the year here, you could still not give it to other people to read and say, well, this was written last week, because uh, the examples that they give are examples from the past, and this is the only part that I regret that uh, sometimes." For us, uh, it would be better if we, if we had uh, examples of today because it's examples that you relate more easily, right? And, and in fact, even uh, Dell, Dell itself doesn't work this way any longer. Uh, we'll, we'll have some time to discuss that uh, in one of our next uh, classes. But basically, it is because, uh, well, uh, m- maybe it's because of the, that same thing that we were discussing before. The trajectory of success of a company ends up what leads it to, to, to failure at some stage. Uh, Dell... That was probably one of the first companies to see the potential of dy- dynamic customization. Uh, and notice that we're talking about dynamic customization here as bringing more value to the customer, but it also adds a lot of value to the company itself because when the customer customizes, uh, self customizes a product, it is also providing the company with, uh, with important information about what the customer values. So it helps. This is what we talked about uh, Nike ID the other day. Uh, it helps. I, I did talk about Nike ID, right, with you? With uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, it, uh, it, 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 dynamic customization helps the company understand what that customer wishes, but it also gives clues about what his neighbor wishes, what his cousin wishes, because we are all sort of we are interconnected and we, and and we we all want to be treated as individuals. We all want to be. Uh, let's say, uh, special, but we are all very similar to one another. So we ended up, we end up uh, uh, choosing things that are very similar to, to, to what our friends would, would choose. Uh, and so in that sense, uh, 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 Dell uh, thought of the dynamic customization. And if we think of, uh, of this uh, model here, what Dell was doing was that Dell looked at IBM, Compaq, and HP that were the main computer manufacturers of the first half of the 1990s, he thought, they all looked at that and said, they, they organized that. Their, their, their factories are strange. The way that they, their business is strange because they they do have a modular product, right? They, they do, do have a modular product. The PC was a very modular product. But then instead of doing uh, dynamic customization, those companies, which would mean redesigning their process for that, those companies were, were in fact... Uh, selling standard products, you, you you need to go to a to a retailer office, and in that retailer office, uh, sorry, retailer uh, company, and in that in, in that company you would buy whatever was there available from the shelf. And Michael Dell said, "Well, if it's a modular product, why don't I I wait until the customer tells me, I don't know how much uh, memory uh, he or she needs in the in, in the computer, what is the size of the hard drive, uh, how large should the, the screen be." Uh, and after I, after the customer customized those th- things, then I assemble a product that is exactly what the customer w- needs. Right? This was clear, uh, but it involved it involved uh, business process redefinition. Right? It, it probably it, it involved uh, redesigning of the network. In fact, we're going to read an interview with Michael Dell, uh, in which uh, also from the '90s, in which Dell said, you, "You know what? I'm not going to to build my own monitors. Sony does it much better than I do." In fact, I'm not going to, to, to build the processor. Uh, Intel does it much better than, than I would do. And if Intel starts failing, it means that someone is succeeding. So if it's AMD, then what I'll do is I will swap, I'll, I'll change. My product is modular enough so that, so that I can change uh, suppliers when they become less, let's say, uh, less competitive than they used to be in the past. So that Michael Dell noticed that these revolutionary levels here needed to be done in the industry, in the PC industry. And he started from he, he was which is from the the, the nineteen from nineteen uh, nineteen eighty five some so 
some uh, 85, uh, some 40 years uh, before you, uh, Uchi, Michael Dell was starting his business from his dorm, from, from his room at the, the university. He was not even a technical guy. He was, a, he was in medicine school, but he had built a computer for himself, uh, built from, from, from the pieces, from modules. And then his colleagues started asking him uh, also for, for, for him to assemble uh, a computer for them. And he thought, why doesn't IBM or Compaq or, Dell or, 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 or HP, why, why don't they assemble according to the customer's needs? So, in fact, Dell was helping uh, Vinka Treman and Henderson build their model here. I would say that this is, this is built trying to interpret what Dell was doing in the, in the 90s. Use the uh, modular product to provide this, uh, dynamic customization, then using dynamic customization to understand the, the, the needs of the customers better and improve the products also. Right? So notice, uh, the, the, maybe the, uh, there's a third vector that I haven't talked about yet, but the, the third vector is what is the virtual expertise or knowledge leverage is, is what nowadays one of the, 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 the maybe the holy grail of, uh, of organization is how do we manage knowledgement? We have knowledge made from inside the company, the employees. How do we keep that and make sure that the that, that knowledge is uh, is kept in the organization, even if the employee decides to to move away from 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 the from the from the, from, the, from from the company? Uh, we have the knowledge of the customers. See, these guys who are, who are doing customer uh, dynamic customization here, they are telling us what they want in the product. When we were talking about Nike IG. Customers were telling us the color that they wanted their, their tennis shoes. They were telling us, uh, uh, providing us with a lot of information simply by customizing, helping us customize their products. So this knowledge from the customers should be also uh, uh, captured by the organization so that it can think of be better products in the future. The knowledge of uh, the suppliers, right? If, if, uh, that, that's, if that's important. So this is all uh, what appears here at, at this third um, third vector, uh, they claim that there is some expertise that is developed and, and, and should be captured. That happens expertise that, that that is shown in the the work unit itself. Then there are uh, uh, things that happen at, at a more organizational level, but that should also be captured. And they they were already saying, look, uh, uh, I mean, 1998, but they were saying there is uh, uh, expertise in a professional community that is. If not freely available, at least it's it's reasonably easily captured from from the crowds. Nowadays we, we listen, we hear a lot of uh, uh, people talking about crowdsourcing, for example. And 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 have you heard of uh, this term crowdsourcing? Yeah, crowdsourcing. Just gathering the information from the from the crowds, from from the web. The web. Uh, yeah, from yeah. Uh, we now, nowadays whatever we do, we we leave a, a, a digital let's say, a stamp, a stamp uh, behind us. And, and that can be used uh, and transformed into, that, that's data, but it can be transformed into knowledge, right? Uh, and there's a, there's a lot of knowledge there uh, available on the, uh, on the web, a ways of, uh, uh, of, of using knowledge that is not inside the company. In fact, this is even a way of trying to escape that uh, destiny uh, of organizations that I, 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 I'm always telling you, Companies become victims of their own tragic uh, trajectory of success. If you can bring knowledge from outside the company, it's knowledge that is not biased by your own previously conceived ideas. So there, maybe you, you have a better chance of escaping that uh, course of uh, you know uh, being trapped by your, your success uh, from the past when you're exposed to ideas from 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 the outside of the company. Uh, I, in fact, I think that this third um, vector is probably the most important of all because knowledge is what makes you, knowledge, for example, about your, your customers' needs is what makes your customers uh, value the products that you, you provide them, right? Knowledge about uh, your, your, the, your processes is probably what will, will allow you to, to end up with a, with a strong resource coalition. However, my impression, uh, and this is my impression about this, um, uh, about this third vector here, is that th this is the, the one that is not as clearly uh, discussed in the paper. I don't know if you had the same impression, but I find that this is a little fuzzier, right? And, and uh, 
did you, did you have that impression or not? Or for you? No? No, I haven't actually noticed that. No? I, 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 at least for, for my reading, as, uh, I, I know this, 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 this is very clear for, for the first, the first, uh, uh, first vector customer interaction. It all makes very, uh, a lot of sense. The examples that he gives uh, show us precisely what he's talking about. And, and, and when we get to the, the knowledge le uh, leverage or virtual expertise here, I had uh, I always had the impression that uh, the ideas are a little uh, a little a little more difficult to capture, uh, but it, it may be my reading of the paper, uh, and, and and maybe if I were to to reframe these these vectors twenty five years later, which is very comfortable because we we I mean we we, we know how far we, we went with it, I would say. Yeah, if we think about cu the, the, the customer interaction, the virtual encounter, definitely we, you, you can use technology to provide the customer with uh, remote experience with uh, products and services. This, this is still what we do, right? Uh, uh, of course, our, the web pages that we have today are much more uh, uh, interactive than they were 25 years ago. Uh, we, do that, we, we don't do that in a large screen any longer. We can do it in a, in a, in a mobile, uh, in, a, in, a, in a cell phone. So changes have happened, but we still... Uh, definitely uh, benefit a lot from providing the customers with a remote experience with the product that allows them to assess the value of the product. Right? Uh, dynamic customization makes a lot of sense. This third stage here, uh, customer communities, this is probably, I, I probably, you know, if I were to write this uh, model from scratch, maybe my, I would use, maybe my third stage here would be a different thing. Uh, I don't know if customer communities uh, is something that uh, we got a bit tired of. Uh, it's not as, as, as big as it, it were in the past, but still, uh, these customer communities uh, uh, are an opportunity for us to try and understand the customers from the again from, from from the signals that they leave behind them when they when when they are on the web or when they use whatever technology. For example, I. A few years ago, the dean of, uh, of uh, uh, the business school where I, 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 I used to teach, it was a different university, uh, he spent a lot of time in social networks. Each time I was, uh, I was you know, in between classes and I, I, and, I, and I went through his room, he was there in social networks. And then I, 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 I joked with him, I, I said, well, it seems that you don't work, you, you spend all your time in social networks. And he said, you know, what I'm doing here is actually working because what I do here and he was saying what I do here is I keep looking for at that stage uh, it, it, it's been it, it's been quite a while uh, at that stage it was still the, the social network was Orkut I don't know if you ever heard of that Orkut 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 was prior to Facebook let me see if I it was I remember MySpace my, uh, my, my space, my space was another one. Uh, let me see if I uh, Wikipedia. Let me just see if I find Orkut. Uh, oh, no, this is again in Portuguese. I don't want Portuguese here. Right. But anyway, th this was the logo for or for Orkut. Uh, it, it was actually a Google. Uh, let me see if this. Can I see this in English? Let me see. Uh, you can just translate yeah. the browser. Yeah, but but uh, uh, how do I do that easily? Do they have it? But anyway, yeah. No, it's not. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, but, but anyway, it doesn't it, it doesn't matter. Uh, it was Orkut. Orkut was released by by Google. It never became. It was it was a big hit in. I remember that it was a big hit in Brazil and India. Brazil and India were the two countries where Orkut was used the most, right? Maybe Pradeep will will have to to ask his his uncles. <laughs> right. You you have to ask if you if you have an uncle who's who's twenty years older than you and it's going to say, yes I use Orkut all the time. But anyway, it doesn't matter which which uh, uh, social network it was. Uh, the thing is, uh, uh, this guy spent a lot of time on Orkut and Orkut people could create communities. Uh, uh, that, and I think in Facebook this was also possible to create uh, groups of people with uh, similar interests and everything. And then he was there always. So there, there were groups of students of that university, and and groups in which they the students did not expect that teachers would be there, 
Right. So he, he registered there as, as if he were one of the students, and he was only seeing what people were saying there. And uh, so, like if, if he was just a, he just wanted to, to, to be an observer. Uh, uh, and I said, well, this is, a, this is like cheating. And he said, well, you know, if I go to the classroom and ask the students what the problems of our, our program are, they, they, they're not going to tell me anything, or they're going to tell me different things. I'm, he says, I'm okay of going there and checking with them trying to to get what what they, they have to say to the dean but I but I, but he said but it's also important for me to be there as if I were one of them and and see what they're discussing among themselves those things that they, they will never tell us because they don't believe that we're going to do something about or, or because they are embarrassed or because uh, for whatever reason uh, they're not going to tell me that it's uh, there are things that students only talk among students uh, and there are things that they, they eventually talk to their to their teachers right? Uh, so he said, I want to know what they talk when they're talking to their colleagues. And then uh, I assess that and, and, and take decisions on how to improve the program based on information that I get there from there. So I, I, I think this customer community has been, uh, if we still could use this, this, uh, vector, uh, this stage here, I would say it's, well, keep an eye on what people are saying about your product on the web uh, or the example that uh, the author gives here is... Um, Harley Davidson, right? Uh, Harley, Harley, Harley has a community of, uh, of very loyal customers. Many of them mechanical engineers who love to disassemble the, 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 the motorbike. Uh, because, uh, is it, is it uh, easy uh, mechanics, uh, Pradeep? Harley Davidson? Yeah, that, that is the basic thing, actually. Uh. They used to study in the static how to assemble, reassemble the uh, whole car or uh, maybe. Yeah, so so I I, I, I have uh, had some colleagues that were uh, mechanical engineers that had Harley Davidson bikes, and the reason that they, they spend their weekends, you know, disassembling their, their their bikes and fixing little things, and then they would go to places like like a, a Harley Davidson uh, uh, customer community, and they would be talking to one another, giving giving other hints on, you know, I cut a little bit of my of the spring that uh, that makes it softer. Uh, and, 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 and then my uh, and then, then my bike is now more stable or less stable or whatever. They were changing ideas among themselves as customers, but there were engineers there looking at what the customers were saying and say, oh, this may be a good idea. Let's try that on our, the, the, the next time we, we produce this in scale. Right? So why not? Why not? It's, it's information that is there for free, right? So I, notice that I, I see here the, the, the Dynamic customization is, is a way of providing a product to the, the customer, but at the same time, it's a way of getting information for the company. The customer community, is, it, it is a way of, of getting information for the company. Uh, the process interdependence and, and resource collision here, are, of course, you're, you're trying to improve efficiency, but at the same time, you're collecting information uh, from those suppliers and understand your own product better. So all of this end up relating to the, to the third uh, vector here of knowledge lav uh, leverage, uh, which I, I I wonder if uh, how the authors would write about if they if they were writing this in 2023 and not in 1998 if they would be clearer uh, uh, about this. But still, what 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 the authors meant with this third vector was we can use technology to under to, to get better knowledge to, uh, uh, to to generate better knowledge to manage the knowledge we generate. And to make sure that we incorporate that into uh, our experiences with the customer and with the suppliers afterwards. Right. Um, so again, it's 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 it's, it's a simple model, uh, but I think it's a model that tells us everything that we we usually do with the uh, with the technology. Why should we bring technology into an organization? Either to improve the process, which may have more to do with the the second vector, which relates to the production uh, asset configuration, or to improve the value, which has a lot to do with the first uh, uh, vector, uh, customer interaction, understanding what the customer the customer wants, and the <coughs> the third value, the, the third vector here is a let's say uh, a vector by means of which I want to make sure that whatever I learned through the two first vectors that that will be incorporated into, into, into the organization and will help us make this organization better in, in the future also. Uh, 
I don't know, any other impressions that you have about the, the model, or about this article, anything, any doubts that you had about what you read? I really like that uh, digital customization. We could, we could be using our website also. You, we will get to read this uh, this interview with with Michael Dell. Let me see where I, I, will, I will do a little rearrangement right in our material here because I don't know what I how I messed up with th things. But anyway, so so that you understand how, how things will go from now when we talk about next uh, uh, next class, which is not going to be the the, the 18th. This, this this will definitely do on Friday, right? Uh, we have two uh, two papers here: Makina 1995 Real Time Marketing and Number Design Number Design. Uh, virtual customer enterprise. These two guys here are talking about what uh, our authors of today would call the, the first vector, customer interaction. Okay. Then uh, we will get to. Th then we 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 will we will play the, the 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 beer game. And in this beer game, we have the beer game. And then we have the same day that we play the beer game. I'm not sure if it's going to be the nineties. So I'll have to change to organize this better, right? Uh, but but anyway. Uh, we will have this is this is the interview with Michael Dell, right? And this interview with with uh, Michael Dell, uh, 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 I believe that uh, that this 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 interview was uh, it was also published in '98, right? I'm not sure if if uh, the authors here, sorry, the authors here had access to that interview. Probably not, because if this paper was published in '98 and the other one was also published in '98, it means that they were both being conceived at the same time. And so I, I don't think that they read the, the, the interview with Michael Dell to come up with their stages. But when you, when we read that, we will keep coming back to this paper here because I'll show you. Look, what, what Michael Dell is proposing there is dynamic customization, just as Pradeep said. And why, why, why he needs uh, dynamic customization? Because he believes that dynamic customization is a great way of, uh, of benefiting from the process in interdependence that is already available since the design of, uh, of the IBM PC, which was a modular product from the beginning. If the product was not modular, it wouldn't make sense to, to, to do dynamic customization. But one thing that Michael Dell could not understand is why didn't the other, the other computer manufacturers provide dynamic customization at that stage, right? Considering that it, that, that it was a modular product. Why did the others sell products out of the shelf? This is something that we'll, we'll, we'll understand uh, uh, w w when we get to that uh, to, to that article, right? And then we have uh, uh, so so and, and when I, we're talking about information flow in the value chain, we're talking a little bit about asset configuration again, right? Uh, and then we will also talk about uh, uh, ch uh, change adoption. I, I know what's missing in here. It's missing the, the third vector. The uh, we, we have here the, the, a class about uh, technological change adoption and acceptance, which means some, uh, it, it is how do we we make sure that people get out of their comfort comfort zone, or how do we show people that what they think to be a comfort zone is not a comfort zone, and they, they, they need to look for a, for another uh, the comfort zone somewhere else, right? But before this, we need to, to have a class on the third vector, the, the vector on, on knowledge uh, management, which is not showing here for whatever reason. But but good, yeah, uh, uh, I agree with you, uh, Pradeep, that uh, that the dynamic customization is, is something that is that we can still benefit from and that many people, ma many organizations of today still don't profit on because either their, their products are not modular or if they're modular, they're modular for other reasons and uh, the customers uh, and the company has not realized that it can use this modularity and tell, almost tell the, 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 the customers, say, look, I have these modules. How do, you, how do you want me to assemble them to make sure that you get the value you need or the product you need? And, and when the customer tells you that, that's information that you capture for your future customers as well. Same way as Nike ID, the, the tennis shoes thing that we were talking about the other day. Okay. Right. So uh, I know this is a little confusing here, but what we will do for Friday, it is these two papers here, Makina 95 and Nambisan and Nambisan 2008, right? I will by by then today in the afternoon I will already fix these things here and fi fix the dates and it will all, all be less confusing. But make sure that, that you read these two papers here for our next class. Right? One thing that uh, I did here and uh, in fact I should have asked you permission beforehand, uh, 
for our dinner. Uh, you will see. I, I I usually record the classes as we go. I I published uh, the, the first one here. As you, you know, what I record is usually I record my my talking. I do record your voice. I don't record your faces, right? Uh, I, I included it here as, as an open file on on, on, on on YouTube. If you think that you, you don't want your voice there either, I can what I can do is I can keep it uh, open only for us. But I usually think that the things that we discuss here could be useful for other people. I think that's I always think of education as being uh, you know you you, 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 you you light another candle, but you, you you do not the light that you have in your candle is still there. Uh, so I, I always think that not, and besides, when, when, when we look at what happens in YouTube, we see that if, if, if there's any, anything there that has more than a thousand views or so, you think, well, this is probably some stupid thing. But, and, and, and important uh, uh, ideas only have very little views anyway. But I, I, I like to, to keep it there if uh, other people wish to, to, uh, to, to watch it. But at the same time, I understand, I am recording your voices also. They're there, right? Uh, if, if any one of you have any problems with that, please send me a WhatsApp message or something. And then I can just, uh, I can make it open only for the, the four of us, right? I, I can assure you that it's not going to be ma many more people that will, wa will watch this, but uh, I, I, I like to give uh, people the opportunity if they're studying things like this or if they, um, I, I like to keep this open. But anyway, so...